it's getting hot in here, so let's go ahead and get started. How to braise copper lines three different ways. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to braise copper by capping it by going full penetration, both of those in the horizontal, and how to do a vertical braise joint. Now, brazing is not hard, and a lot of people, well, complained about my brazing last time, but it's because I learned to braise full penetration, penetrating the full cut brazing. I'm gonna show you why that's important for a med gas system, because it's required, but I'm also gonna show you how to just cap a joint. So, if you have not been here before, or even if you have, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this video, literally, we're gonna braise two inch copper. Now, I'm gonna do it a little different because I've got a jig set up here. It's gonna be really easy for me to show you, but the first thing that we gotta do, we gotta put together our torch. Now, this is a brand new rig I just got, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this together, but I wanted to show you how, because sometimes we get a new torch, some people are like, well, how's this go? It's not really complicated and it's very easy to do. So I'm gonna put this together real quick just to show you. So the first thing we're gonna do is put our regulator on. And as you see, you've got a gauge here showing full and empty. So we're gonna put this on where the gauge is right side up, not upside down where you're gonna be fighting the hose and not turned at an angle. Now I have seen some plumbers put it at an angle because they said this helps protect the gauge. The gauge is what most plumbers break or apprentices break moving their plumber's torch around. Now, as you see, I'm not using a big pair of pliers on this because I don't want it super tight. I just want it snugged up to where it's not gonna move. That way I don't have any problems with it. Now, all I gotta do is hook the hose up. Now, I want you to notice on the threads, see the notch in the nut there? What that means is it's a reverse thread. So when you put this on, you're gonna turn it left instead of right to get it started. And again, not a big pair of pliers, and then snug it up. It does not have to be super tight. Now, I like what it says on here. It says, warning before use, read instructions. Well, I didn't do this. I've done this for a few years now. Again, is everything snug? Yes, it is. On the other end, same thing, reverse threads. So instead of turning it to the right, we're gonna turn it to the left. Now, literally, this torch is pretty much ready to go. All I have to do is to determine which tip that I want. Now. I just bought this set and I want to use one of the new tips, even though, believe it or not, it's a little bit smaller than I need. But the tip that we're going to use, the A11, is rated to up to one and five eighths inch pipe. We're going to solder with two inch pipe, so I don't think we're going to have any problems. So before we do this, we do want to check for leaks. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the handle. I'm going to open it and close it just to make sure my handle is closed all the way, my valve here, because this is what controls my gas flow. Now, I'm going to open this up because I know I'm closed here, and my gauge goes to full instantly. Now, I only open this about a half of a turn, so I'll put my wrench on her and turn a quarter of a turn twice. Now I can open this up. This is the control valve on your regulator. Some plumbers just turn their torch on and off from here until they replace it. So we're gonna screw it in to allow more gas. The further in you go, the more gas you get. I take my regulator all the way in and then turn it off here. Here's our tea. We're going to clean it up in a minute, but first, let's get ready to cut some pipe. Now, cutting the pipe today, I'm going to get a piece of two inch, put it up here in the vise, go ahead and get it cut, get the pieces ready, then get them cleaned up, then I will clean up everything else. I've taken an old fitting brush. Now, I could do this with a two inch brush and sit here and twist for a while. But what I really like to do is get an old fitting brush that you can see it's worn down a little bit, cut the handle off, stick it into a drill motor. Very nice, very clean, very easy to do. You've got it good and clean. It goes together well. You can look down inside and see full penetration of the fitting. So now that I got the pieces together, I'm getting them where I want them in the stand. Now, I'm just kind of anal retentive. So as you see, the letters are all turned up. So that's a big deal to me. We're ready to go. I may take this out in a little bit, but I want to put it in now just for brazing purposes. Now, if I was out in the field and spacing was further apart, I may want to put a brace. I may want to put something here to keep this up and level. Now right here, 
My working conditions are good. Everything's real tight. I'm not worried about it sagging or dropping or anything. That's what I've got these clamps on it for. We're ready to go, but now I'm gonna go with my tenon safety glasses. I'm also gonna change gloves. Don't try to braze in vinyl gloves. I've done it before. If they get hot, you're gonna regret it. We know our torch is ready to go. I don't need to clean the orifice. It's a brand new tip. Sounds like we are ready there. Now, one tip I wanna give you here. If you've ever got brazing rod that's been out for a while and it's oxidized, it started to turn green, you wanna take a thin piece of sand cloth and scrub it. You really wanna clean that oxidation off. It's gonna give you impurities in your solder joint that could actually make it start leaking. It's getting hot in here, so let's go ahead and get started. The first one, literally, we're just gonna cap. The second one, we're gonna go full penetration like we would for a med gas joint. So before I get started, I'm gonna tell you the way I solder. I actually believe in heating the pipe first because I want it to expand and fill any of the joint in between that and the fitting. So I'm gonna start heating on the pipe and then I'm gonna move in. Solder flow goes to the heat. When I'm capping a joint, I will keep my heat mainly out here on the edge of the joint where I'm gonna put the solder. On this one, whenever I go full penetration, I'm actually gonna heat it more towards the inside and then I'm gonna push this solder in as far as I can because I'm literally wanting that heat to draw it all the way down inside. Then on the top, we'll do it full penetration too. After you make a braze joint, you wanna be real careful not to hit it, not to bump it. This joint is still hot, it can move real easy, and it can crack it and cause you to have a leak. So while that's still hot, let's go ahead and get ready to do full penetration over here. So the thing to a solder joint is getting it hot enough that your solder melts and flows where you want it to flow. This one I just capped, this one I filled, didn't cap it very well. This one here I filled and capped really, really well. Now a lot of people are going to tell you I wasted too much seal floss, too much brazing rod, but I don't have leaks. I want to make sure that whenever I'm soldering, I'm getting a good melt over on the pipe and I never want to see my fitting. So I want to make sure that when I do cap it, I completely cover that fitting. A lot of people are gonna say, Roger, if you work for me, I'd fire you. Well, good, because I don't wanna work for anybody that doesn't want it done right, because I do it right each and every time. So if you wanna learn how to braise, I hope you got a lot out of this. The most important things, make sure your fitting and your pipe are clean, and you get everything set up the way you want it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.